session for the Douglas County Board of County Commissioners. Today, we are revisiting the Douglas County Master Plan and the JLE Remodel Edition and Project. Um, uh, all of our work sessions, are, there's no action taken at the end, although this one, Sarah, has a motion. Okay. Yeah. Um, but we don't typically take action during our work sessions, and we do not uh, take public comment. If you'd like to provide public comment um, on any of the topics covered at our work session, you're welcome to join our 5.30 business meeting and share those thoughts um, at that meeting. This is a item on our agenda, so um, you wouldn't, a portion of our agenda, so you would provide public comment during our regular agenda and not during general public comment. I think I've confused everybody, so that must mean it's time to turn it over to Sarah and Jay um, to start our presentation. Thanks, commissioners. Um, I'll turn it over to Jeff here to reintroduce his team. Uh, I think our, and Jeff's gonna articulate some goals that we kind of wanna leave this work session with, so I'll let him do that at the end, but this is just to follow up on a series of conversations we've been having about the expansion and renovation of the Judicial and Law Enforcement Center. Jeff? Excellent. Thank you, commissioners. I know it's been a couple months since we were here last, and I know that uh, when we came last time and, and walked through a handful of different options and thoughts, that we came away with some questions uh, from you. So I want to hopefully today be able to answer those uh, to the best of our ability as it related to our study and where we're at. I've also brought with me a couple of different things that we may hand out just from a clarification standpoint uh, that was not in the slide presentation, as well as we did bring a 3D model that I'll uh, navigate through a little bit, just because I think that it starts to help understand better what we're talking about and moves us beyond the idea of paper, but into a place that makes some sense on the site. So I just want to talk through program again. There were some questions related to our space program. I want to talk through the master plan a tad bit on one option based on our last conversations. And then I want to share next steps and where our team will be headed uh, here over the next few months as we move into schematic design. Um, with that, before I move too much further along, I do want to uh, let everyone know that at the table today, is uh, Tim Ockingay with J.E. Dunn and Mike Comer with J.E. Dunn, and they've been helping us uh, uh, due diligence on costing uh, thought process as it relates to phasing with any shape or form as we've looked at these options, and also looking at just what's temporary costs uh, as it relates to, to move out or those types of things. So we've, we've really tried to hone in here over the last uh, four to six weeks on a lot of the questions you guys had, and hopefully we can answer those and, and then be able to move forward. Um, so let's talk a little bit more about the program, but before we get there, I just wanna hit a couple things that I think is important as we think about the wrap up of the study and where we move forward as it relates to the project in general. And, it, and I, I know I've reiterated these, I think about every time I show up, but part of it is I think it's really important, not just for you, but for the public and staff to be reminded of what the goals are or were or need to be as it relates to this project and why we're doing what we're doing. So first off, uh, it, it comes down to separate circulation in the three paths, both from staff, inmate, and, and then public. Uh, Right-sizing and thinking about best practices as it relates to space standards in bringing those up to speed, whether that's courts, whether that, or sorry, courtrooms, whether it's office spaces, what are those things that we're doing today that need to be right sized to make this facility a long lasting facility for the county? Improving security, although your security is great from the standpoint of what they do today, there are things that need to be done to move forward into the 21st century. And I think that's part of the conversation that we had. And then the county needs for 20 years. It's not that we want to uh, design and or build for 20 years, right? 
it's thinking about how do we make sure that this building or what we do plans out for the 20 years. So it may be that we hit a goal and the idea of being able to do something that matches what you need for the next 10 years within the idea that you can come back and look at it from a master plan perspective to hit that 20 or the next 10 or 20 years from that perspective. So I think that's one of the things I want to caveat because I know there's some things that have been out there, some conversations that have been had. We're not saying that today you've got to go build for 20 years or design for 20 years and build something that matches that. What I think the goal was is that we look at it and provide you a plan to move forward to that. So uh, this is something else that you've also seen as it relates to existing departments. Just again, to remind everybody where everybody sits today in the building. Uh, so fairly, fairly similar to uh, what you've seen. We didn't do anything else to it, but I wanted to just reiterate where everybody is and, and uh, the idea of, of uh, large spaces on different floor plates. So in the program, one of the clarifications that I wanted to make sure that we talked about is we have talked about the current JLEC building having or being 100,000, a little over 100,000 square feet. One of the pieces that I wanted to touch on is that is gross square footage, okay? So that's, that's like if I go to the outside of the building and I go measure it all the way around, and any voided spaces out front there is not included. But that's your gross square footage. And I, I wanna make that clear because that number that you see that goes across the bottom now matches up. So your current uh, square footage, okay, is at 73,182, I believe it is, or so. So that's your uh, net uh, departmental square footage, okay? That does not include circulation, that does not include bathrooms and those types of things. So that's how you get to that 100,000 square feet. So I wanna, I wanna make sure everybody's clear on that. And then also to look at the grossing factor. So oh, what I did there is to get to the number, I, I showed a grossing factor and I believe that's 1.37. So you can see that as we looked at the current needs and when we talk about current needs, what we're talking about there is if we were doing best practices and best standards for both office spaces and what have you. So you can see what that number looks like. That does not give you, uh, so if there's additional staff, additional courtrooms, uh, this is if you were to take everything that you currently have today and meet those needs just for today. Okay. Jeff, can I yes. ask you real quick? Sure. The, the building grossing factor that you talked about, that is to account for uh, public spaces, corridors, and those kinds of things. Is that right? Yeah, stairs, elevators, um, bathrooms, public bathrooms, those types of things. Yes. Huh? Uh, no, we do have some mechanical, if there's a mechanical chase, to your point, or a plumbing chase, or those types of things that are within the, the building internally, that's part of that factor. So, and I see you use the same factor, you know, projected into the, the future need also uh, that routed 1.4. My question is, uh, with the circulation needs that we are going to, should that be a larger number or are we saving enough by shrinking some of these of kind of unused corridors in order to uh, gain enough space elsewhere to, to account for uh, various different corridors? That's a great question. And I will tell you that I believe that based on the factor that we have, that we will be able to meet the, the what we're talking about from the circulation standards that we're after with the factor we have uh, calculated in. So I'm comfortable with that uh, from our perspective. And I would say that because and I know Sarah has uh, cautioned me to, to be careful how I do this. I do believe that there are because when we start to actually lay out the spaces and the and the all the rooms, there are going to be some efficiencies with that, and I believe we can do those things in what we've done over the over our my my career to be able to get that to make that work. So I'm comfortable with where we're at. Does that help answer your question? Okay. Uh, so, so you can see then what the current need is. Then you can turn and look at the five-year need. Now, let me back up just a minute. The current five-year and 20-year need, 
those numbers have been in the in the study and was part of the conversations we had. So really, all I added was that current or the current piece, and I wanted to just have that as a comparison across the board. But you can see where that kind of lands at the end of the day. I would tell you the other question that I know was brought was, well, then what's a 10-year need kind of look like? And I would tell you, based on what I what we've talked about, some conversations that we've had, that you're probably looking at a a, a lieu of 132. You're probably at 100. 38 to 142,000 square feet or so uh, at the end of the day based on staffing needs, based on what we're seeing as it relates to each of the departments. So that's kind of where that lands. And we didn't do a math for that, but that'll be part of our next steps as we move forward into the, into the next stage. Does that make sense? Does that help uh, clarify a couple of questions? Great. So then what we did is we wanted to look at uh, the building per se as it relates to uh, each of the departments from a five year and then a 20 year. And so the black outline is what your current building is. And this really doesn't need to relate to departments. This is more related to if you were to put everybody in the building, the graphic here is to show that it's not all going to fit. It's kind of like having a five pound bucket of paint and you need to put 10 gallons in it, right? It doesn't fit. And so what we're trying to show here is the idea that as you grow, even in the five-year window, no matter what you look at from a department perspective or a county perspective, you're not going to fit within your current facility. So you can kind of see, and, and I know I quickly scrolled through some of these, but just a graphic to be able to show how that works within what we're trying to accomplish. And yes. these are current square footage needs, or which, which? No, this is our this is our five year need this within is the, the program. Year. Yes, great, thank you. Yep, great question. So then you can then begin to look at the twenty year need and what it starts to do as it relates to the building itself. And again, the idea here is not architecture. The idea is here to just think about it from a space planning uh, uh, process. So that's how that starts to pull together. So you can see that there's a need here, uh, no matter how you shake the stick, and most of you can already probably understand that, but I think the graphic starts to help understand uh, what, that, what that may need as a growth perspective. Any questions on those before I move to, to kind of the master plan piece? Okay. So through the master plan plan process, my understanding or our team's understanding <clears throat> is that we've kind of narrowed down to a place that makes some sense, which was option four in our schemes within the schematic design process. And so one of the options in option four, and I'm gonna walk through three here real quick, or not real quick, but quickly, um, is to look at an addition uh, to the south of this building uh, that starts to make some sense as it relates to that 10-year window. So if you think about 70,000 square feet, you add that to the 53,951, <clears throat> that gets you pretty close to that uh, five and 10-year window at the end of the day. So we're not, one of the things I wanna clarify here as well is I know there's been some discussion about, well, does this get us to 20 years? This doesn't get you to 20 years. This would get you to that 10-year window at the end of the day. Um, based on, on the growth that, that we've talked about. So the 20 year need would have to, to move beyond that at an, another stage. Or if you wanted to get to the 20 year window, then that addition needs to, needs to grow a tad bit to get there. Does that make sense? So this option here, and again, I didn't, I wanted to keep consistent. So I've kept these as we've presented in the past. And I know that on 1006, we're not planning to do anything. But so, so that would go away uh, within this option. But I wanted to make sure that everybody kind of saw this, the dollars there at the bottom of that phase one. And then phase two then moves the sheriff out. And that's where a lot of your 20 year growth happens within this addition or this option. Make some sense? Okay. So then in 4C, it's looking at, and I'll show you in a minute on the model once we get through these, but 4C actually shows <clears throat> here an option that gets you basically to your current need. Um, so this is, this is a number that starts to pull together and say, 
all right, we're gonna put a 52,000 or so square foot addition to this building. And we really go to best practices and we meet your current need and we don't do anything from a growth perspective. And our growth begins to look at, I'm gonna add in the next 10 to 20 or 10, next, yeah, 10 to 20 years, I'm gonna add on to the existing building uh, down there at the bottom on that phase two portion. And I'm gonna go add the sheriff's uh, building, uh, uh, ops building uh, somewhere else on a, on a greenfield site. So that's how you capture then your 20 year plan uh, over the next uh, uh, duration we talked about. Still meets, uh, we can still get your 10 courtrooms, uh, but there is no growth factor within this as, it, as you move forward. And then 4D uh, here in this option, uh, 4D then takes and, and moves that sheriff's operations piece up. It's not the full 20 year plan. So this gets you to about a 10 year window for the sheriff's ops, dispatch and emergency management. It's on the Greenfield site with the ability then for expansion for the next 10 to 20 year window as it relates to that. This also then adds the, that 52,000 square feet onto the building, uh, current uh, JLEC building, which gets you to that uh, uh, 10 year uh, window as well. Then once you move all the sheriff and emergency management and other groups out of the building to the sheriff's ops component, that's where that 20 year growth happens within the current facility. Does that make sense? Okay. Questions on those types of, uh, on those three items before I move over to the bottle for a minute. Okay. Do I have to take this with me? All right, thank you. So one of the things that I think is, is important that we wanted to be able to show today, there were some questions as it relates to how do we handle a um, uh, an addition that starts to look at, I gotta get this right, because I got good people that do good work. How do I actually look at an option that begins to match up with the floor plate of the existing building, okay? And what does that do on the site? So let me let me back up a tad bit and talk about the model for a second, and then everybody can can uh, can look at it later. But we're not complete with this yet, and it's going to be a, a process component as we do design. But what I wanted to do today was I wanted to be able to show a site with uh, the existing housing, the existing courthouse and your JLEC building and, and the park. Because part of the conversation that we're having, right, is what's this addition do? How does it start to inform the site itself, the park, uh, the building, uh, your current courthouse that we're in today? How does that begin to inform that? What's, what's it do to the parking? So all of those things, I think, from a graphics perspective, starts to make some sense. And so when we're done today, you can come and take a look at it. You can actually begin to see from a house perspective and those types of things, what each of the additions may or may not do as it relates to that. So this is a uh, about 70,000 square feet and it stays as uh, the same floor plate as what you currently have today. So that's part of what that starts to do and look like and, and no design, okay? Just a block. If we were to think about the idea of being able to do something that may be uh, a floor level higher, <clears throat> which in our conversations uh, with um, our historic group and just having some, some dialogue to begin to think about what we're doing here, this seems appropriate. It seems appropriate from the perspective of we know we can add an additional floor here. So there's the ability to be able to capture those types of things here for the future if you so chose. So one of the things about this type of an option and, and this square footage may get a tad bit bigger if you so think about it a little bit as well, but stay at the same height, depending on how we lay it out. But the idea here is you could actually capture a, another level at a later date and everybody can stay within this building if you so chose. Um, so those are some things to think about as it relates to what we're gonna do and where we're gonna go from here. But that I think helps understand a little bit more the paper ideas into a more uh, physical thought process that we've got. Does that help a little bit? 
great. And yes, this was done on a 3D printer. Like I said, we're not done. We're going we're gonna to add to it. The idea behind this model really for us and, and hopefully for you and for everybody is actually to be able to, as we design uh, this portion, is to be able to bring it and plug and play and, and put it into the space and be able to know what that really is going to do. I think it also will help the public and others understand what we're trying to accomplish at the end of the day. So just a good little tool for us. And Jeff, you can I ask you a quick question? Sure. So the, the, the larger block, and you said that was the 70,000 square foot, um, the, the uh, uh, four story, the smaller block, is that 52 or is the 52 the previous uh, suggestion of a three story and then this is a four story? No, this is 52 okay. uh, based on that option. I believe it was 4C that we talked about. Yeah. So I just kind of wanted to, but what I guess I'm saying is, is as we move into schematic design, if this needs to be, say, 60,000 square feet, you can kind of see what that starts to do there as well, depending on what we choose to do. The questions or thoughts to that? So then. Jeff, then option 4C is this more square. So if you go back a slide. 4C yes. is the taller, smaller. Yes. So, but you're kind of showing us both taller and smaller on the slide. This larger flat was for just regular four. Yes. 4A. Got it. Yes. Yep. Just, to, and again, to me, part of what I'm not, part, part of what I guess I'm sharing here is We've talked a lot about square footage. We've talked about these blocks and those types of things. And I think we've got to move into schematic design and begin designing. And when we do that, the number of 70,000 or whatever, 52,000, depending on where you guys want to go, may be a little different once when we come back. And what I want to be able to show with the blocks is, okay, do we want to think about a three-story or a two-story that matches your existing? Do, do we want to think about an option that starts to actually move above that and capture another level so that you can actually think about growth of the next 20 years that may be a little bit smaller? And what's that do within the site itself? And what's that look like against the building you currently have? Does that help? Okay. Questions on any of those things before I go into the, the ask and the conversation of, of next steps? So this question may be, I'm not sure who it's for, but 4C and 4D, the big difference that I see there, if I'm understanding, is that in 4D, we would start building the sheriff's office building earlier, correct? That's a correct statement. And there is an additional cost for doing that, correct, on the total amount? Correct. Okay. Just to be clear, there's an additional overall cost over the 10 year plan. It's not, or by moving that up, that I think I quick math, the high end, it would be another 6 million. Is that about right? Maybe 5 million? Yeah, about yeah. 5 million. Yeah, about 5 uh, million. Is, is where you're at. So that's your higher end uh, option at the end of the day. Yes. Other questions or thoughts on what we've talked about so far? Great. So I think the question that we have or the, the uh, direction that we would like to make sure we move in uh, based on the conversations that we've had today is, are we envisioning the next five to 10 years where um, the JLEC building and whatever we do to the addition of this encompasses everybody? From the, from the county's perspective, or are we looking at something where, for us, to your point, Commissioner, do we want to move up the idea of being able to move a group out of the building and capture that in its own portion first or part of that first phase or not? And so I think for us, so that we don't go down a road as a design team, is are we feeling more comfortable that we'd like to keep everybody in the JLEC over the next five to 10 years and move in that direction and design, come up with concepts and ideas for that? 
or do we want to look at an option that begins to think about something a little differently? And I'd like to get your thoughts on that. I don't need full, as you are well aware, and I am, what today is. But I want to make sure I get a, a thought process from you guys to make sure we move in a good direction so that when we come back at the uh, first part of February to be able to show some concept ideas, bring some additional thoughts on the model, those types of things, that we're doing what we want to do and what you guys uh, would like to see. So that I'm going to leave it to, to uh, a little conversation and dialogue with you guys. So just to reiterate Commissioner Kelly's question, the only difference, <clears throat> and I don't know my computer in front of me, but looked again this afternoon between 4C and 4D is whether or not we move sheriffs and we build a brand new building in the first phase or the second phase. Is that the only material difference? That's really the only difference. I mean, I, I think you can look at square footages and talk about that, but I think we've got to give you a concept idea and that concept idea, if it's, um, whoops, sorry, let me back up. If it's the concept idea is 4C or 4, the, the addition square footage is going to going to work with what we're trying to get to, to that 10 year need. That's really, so that piece may change as we move forward associated with the dollars. But to your point, the only difference between those and 4D is taking the sheriff and, and creating a, an ops building. And between 4C and 4D, that 52,000 square foot addition, give or take, um, that is with the planned four stories. Is that right? right? But not building a new story on top of the existing building yet, just making it possible. Correct. Okay. So, so adding on to your existing building would be part of phase two. Okay. Thanks. Just yep. wanted to clarify. Yeah. And it's probably best to call those four levels as opposed to four stories because one of those is underground. Right. So right. it'd be three stories with a lower level. Correct. Correct. Yeah. Yeah, correct. So, commissioners, I think for me, I'm more interested in 4C and 4D than I am in 4, the one that goes all the way out. I'm interested to hear from others what they think about the sheriff's piece of that. But if I understand it correctly, um, I, 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 am, I was worried on the four, option four, about the impact to our parking lot. And this does better. I think it also, um, for me, reduces the impact of those neighborhood homes that are across the street. And and I like going taller. I definitely agree that the the additional floor offered in 4C and 4D interests me a lot. I think it's more responsible to have that smaller footprint and start building our downtown up. Uh, we've already started that kind of as a downtown conversation and I think it's it's appropriate for us to kind of join that also. Um, so then the question becomes, can we afford, not too much do we want to, but can we afford to um, have the either, and I kind of in my head, either the Sheriff's Department or um, 911 Communication, Either, either or, and this one's presenting uh, sheriff's office. I would say that it interests me a lot to not have people downtown in downtown real estate that don't need to be and don't benefit from it. So certainly, the the sheriff's office falls under that category by quite a lot. They prefer to have a different location. So having downtown space set aside for them doesn't seem um, to really move anybody's goals forward. And certainly the 911 communications um, portion has a, has a different need than where it is currently. So um, my question really has been, you know, how much can we afford within the uh, tax authority that we have to accomplish either 4C or 4D? And I, I think we are cl close to being able to choose either of those options. I want to make sure we hear from Commissioner Reed before we jump into that next, because we have four C and D. Yeah, no, I'm on the same page as you, and um, that was kind of option four was the easy one for me to sort of eliminate when reviewing the packet and and comparing them. Um, and I, I agree, I like the idea of going up um, and shortening that footprint a little bit on the ground. So um, I'm with you on that, and then you know my opinion about the um, sheriff's office is 
the sooner we do it, the cheaper it will be. It's only going to get more expensive. That's sort of the simple math for me is that if we have the cash now available sooner rather than later, then in the long run, it will it is bound to save us money if it's an inevitability, not a question of whether or not we're going to, but when we're going to, then I lean towards sooner is better. Jeff, can you clarify, so on 4D, is that just, is that both emergency management, emergency communications, and the sheriff? That's my understanding is it's all three under 4D. Correct. Then the expansion in the 20-year model is just their expansion space that they need in the next 10 years. So you're not picking under 4D, all three departments move out. That is, that is the idea. Um, I think that part of what I would share as it relates to this and, and dispatch, and I know Sarah and I have had a couple of these conversations, but we're comfortable with where we are currently. Um, there, there may be some soft costs related to those uh, movement of that group out that is not captured currently. So that would need to be part of the conversation, I think, as we move forward and diving in a little bit more about what that is and how that starts to impact the project. So I, I just want to clarify that. Does that help? Yeah, it does. And from my perspective, um, not to jump ahead too much and start talking about affordability, but if that's sort of the conversation where we're headed, um, that that's around where 4D begins to make me a little nervous. And I just want to be transparent with the commission about that. Um, you know, maybe it's just because we've spent less time. I feel like I've spent a ton of time talking about, you know, the blocks that are inside the Judicial and Law Enforcement Center. Um, I'm a little less comfortable with the blocks associated with the sheriff's uh, and emergency communication move um, and what would be the cost requirements for that. And just I'm um, looking at Jay Dunn here for those conversations because that is the, you're pushing the upper limit of what we can afford without additional funds. So I, I just want the commissioners to be comfortable about that. I don't have a lot of wiggle room if in that option. So I would say that 4D as presented there has the you know, sheriff's operations in the current plan and then the um, uh, emergency ops in the, the second phase. So now we're talking instead of like a 4E that that building footprint would carry uh, those, all of those um, organizations, and then there'd be an expansion of that building as needed in the 20 year plan. Is that what we're hearing? Correct. And what I would share as it relates to the sheriff's, the sheriff's ops uh, building, what I would rather, what I'd like to look at if this is kind of where we want to look, where we want to go, or what we, what we think makes some sense is looking at it from a perspective of we have about I think it's 37,000 square feet of space that we've identified for that building. So what makes the most sense to move there in this first stage and, and, and make sure that it matches the dollars that we're trying to get to so that we're not over the dollar amount, okay? So the idea here would be if, if we look at it and we find out that, hey, by the way, we've got a we want to move dispatch out and we want to move emergency management out and maybe we're moving a portion of the sheriff out and not all of it from an office perspective. What's that look like so that we match up and work within the dollar uh, amount that's available? Does that make sense what I'm what I'm saying and what I'm trying to get to so that we don't sit here and design and work through a process to get to a building and a footprint and we move and then we go, holy smokes, we're over budget. We need to do in the schematic design phase, which is why I think we need to, why we wanna move into that direction is having these types of conversations. So who fits there and, and best for the dollars that are available? Does that help with that conversation? That is the conversation I want to have because I <laughs> it, it means a lot to me to stay within what our cash and debt availability will be and not have, bring a conversation to the community about any kind of an increase in taxes. I think we need to work within what we can afford to do. Um, and that, so that's that affordability question that Sarah was going to get to. I mean, what's the question? <laughs> I mean, so 
I think what I guess I'm saying is that the design team and as a construction management at risk team, our job in schematic design is to is to take uh, uh, and look at this and come back and be able to say, here's we have a good un I think we have an understanding of where you sit from the standpoint of dollars and it's not trying to use every penny you have, but giving you options that actually show layouts, ideas, sites, those types of things. Uh, how each of the departments work within your existing building in addition and a new build and what makes the most sense from a dollar perspective who needs to move out because I think that's where we've right now currently sat and thought I think we're good I think we feel good from a design and a construction team of the numbers we've pulled together I think we need to actually lay it out understand it and it may be that all we're building not, let me back up. It may be that what we suggest is a building that has about 20,000 square feet on a greenfield site that still maximizes the ability to do the dollars and moves the right departments out there on this first stage. And then phase two, we're moving a different group or, or a larger amount of folks out to that space. Does that help understand what I'm, what we're trying to do? I, wanna, I just want to confirm so that we go down the line because <laughs> we're talking way out here in some of these numbers. So what I hear you saying is working within the budget identified in 4C, but doing some of the things we're talking about doing in 4D. No, what I'm talking about is to fit within a budget that may be similar to this one here in 4, but works with an option of 4D. Does that make sense? I so think a $70 million price, a maximum of $70 million, there you go. what can be accomplished within the maximum of $70 million towards option of 4D? Right. Does that, does that answer? Did yeah, I need to totally do some confusion. math in my head real quick. Oh. Yeah, I think so. I'm not that fast. <laughs> well, uh, yes. We've made mention of some soft costs associated with, or some yet yet to be identified soft costs associated with uh, 911 communications and emergency management. Um, those might be significant that we have, and we've talked about kind of what the cost of the building and the square footage. Have we not talked in, in, within that about like that hardened space that, that is needed, plus also communication towers and uh, whatever their technology availability needs for that. So there, there's quite a lot to consider there, right? So let me let me help try to work through that with you a little bit. From a hardened space uh, uh, idea, I'm not worried about that from our dollar perspective. We'll get it to fit within within the dollars we have. That's part of what we will do together collectively to make sure that happens because we know that building type. As it relates to the communication uh, equipment and those types of things, that's currently not included as part of what we've got from a dollar perspective. And that's where I think for us and our team and you guys, we need to do our due diligence on that and be able to come back and say, here's what that may look like from a soft cost perspective and how that actually fits within the, the budget and the dollars that you currently have. Does that, that help answer that question? Okay. So Sarah, I want to make sure I understand what, you, <laughs> what you're telling us. So option four has a maximum budget of, of 70 million. Option 4D has a maximum budget of 76 million. Mm -hmm. Can you give me a sense of where, are you worried about 70 million? Are you worried, I mean, where's your, my estimation in current dollars that the CIP sales tax fund has capacity for $74 million. Okay. That is today. Um, so the question would be if, if they were able to stay under 70, that gives us some room for talk about soft costs and, and equipment needs in that space. Also, you know, we've got a year or two of, of some before all those costs would have to be spent. So we, as you commissioners know, we've been putting a lot of money into that fund over the next couple of years. So it's not unreasonable. I mean, we will put another $2 million into that fund before this project's built. Uh, and I don't have that included in my calculus, in my calculus yet. 
So I, I'm feeling, but I don't like telling the architect and the construction company my absolute top number because I, I think we need, we have a lot of work left to do in this process to, to get to where we set a total project budget. And so I would rather us aim a little under what we have so that we have, we're not in a difficult position in six months from now where commissioners really want everything on the model and we're short a couple million dollars. So. So Sarah, just re recapping what you just said, it's the, the cash that we have accumulated for this project and the debt capacity that we qualify for, but not yet within that capacity, the, the additional sales tax dollars that we anticipate coming in, is that counted in that? 74 million or not? It, it's the existing debt capacity that we have today with the existing sales tax dollars that come into that and our existing, some of the existing fund balance in that fund. It's not all of it because you still need to remain a fund balance to maintain the debt issuance. So it's a portion of that. I was not planning on, uh, I wasn't calculating what that growth would necessarily be. I've asked them, I've asked bond council to specifically just tell us what can we afford today. So with that, I think what I'm understanding is that our team needs to go do some work and come back and come back with uh, uh, some, some concept ideas to begin to look at uh, for D and works with a budget component that makes some sense that we've talked about here today. Jeff, I, I appreciate you trying to get us to that point, but I think that's our work to make sure that we're saying exactly where we want to be. Um, I think, I, 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 I like the concept, but I want to be real clear on how much wiggle room we're giving the architect. I don't want to give the architect 74 you know where that budget is um i, I think um i would like to be able to look at the emergency ops side and understand the budget implications before we make that are we able to do that in this before we make that jump to that or yeah, or do we need to decide that today i think it was gonna be part of my question jeff is if we continued exploration of schematic design around a sheriff's office annex um my first question is is that going to delay the design development process from where you're at from what we had talked about originally where design is wrapped up hopefully april may of 2024 hmm. that's an interesting thought process uh, let me, let me, let me, I, it does not delay the idea of schematic design getting done in that time frame. So I'm not worried about that. What I think it allows us to do um, for us is to be able to come back to your point, come back and go, here's what fits, meaning here's, sorry, let me, here's the, the departments and the pieces that fit within that addition. And then what are the additional costs that are associated with it if there are certain departments that go in it? That's what I've got. That's what we need to be able to do and come back with. And, and I think that makes some sense because if you compare it to option 4C, I mean, really that option is a little small for, for where we need to be in terms of our 10-year need. So you'd be coming back much sooner to, to talk about a sheriff's operations building and, you know, a you know, a third floor level, you know, moving into those options. So I don't feel like any work you do schematically is necessarily wasted mm -hmm. on the sheriff's ops building in terms of design because, and you know, we're talking about, are we doing, what, what piece of this are we doing now? And what piece are we gonna be doing in five years or so right. Right. in terms of some of those conversations? But I do think that schedule calendar is, in terms of some of these pieces is something you're going to probably want to talk to us about when you come back in February. That's a great point, sir. And that's actually one of the things I was going to share is that's, that's why we kind of want to make sure we're heading down a, a decent road or a good road so that when we do come back here at the first part of February is we did want to have a schedule associated with both design and construction that's been vetted out 
as a team to be able to explain how that works. And it's different, you're right, the schedule is a tad bit different if you look at an option like this than if you look at an option where we're just adding on to the existing building. And obviously more time gives me more time to look at financials too as well in terms of how year-end fund balances come in um, with that fund and other things as well. So I, I do feel like, you know, I feel, I think there is a, we were really hoping for clear direction um, and then now I think we may gave ourselves more wiggle room than maybe we originally wanted, Jeff, but I think it's this notion that if if it doesn't slow the process down, I think it's probably worth exploration. Yeah, I think the only thing I would share is if we go down a road similar to this option here that we've got, and we come back in February with some ideas and concepts, and you guys go, wait a minute, that's that's not going to meet what we're anticipating. Um, we may be out 30 days, but I don't think that is going to affect drastically what we're trying to do. Because the, the addition portion, whether it's this option here in 4D or an option like 4C, um, that addition is going to be courtrooms in most likely. And so we're not gonna change that portion. So it'll be the work that we're gonna do inside the building that changes. And we'll go get that done if that's if that's what we've got to do to, when we get back. Yeah, that, that plan gives me a lot more comfort that we have a <laughs> little more wiggle room, especially on on that annex, whatever we're calling that sheriff emergency annex, because I think I just don't have a clear picture yet what's in there and having visited with emergency management and and the sheriff, I, I think we just need some more clarity around that and we need to be real clear on what our budget is for that. But if we, I mean, 30 days, I'm sure seems like a lot, but on a project that is going to last over a decade, it's probably not that much. Right, I agree with you 100%. Okay. Well, I'm anticipated that this conversation we would decide, you know, whether or not on an, an annex similar to this, and then which of those pieces, either um, Sheriff's Office or um, Emergency Communications and Emergency Management, which which one of those pieces might be moving. And now it sounds like we're kind of going to look at look at a range of options for what might fit there, what might what that might cost, because my, my concern with making a decision on that tonight was not knowing what those soft costs uh, probably significant soft costs were going to be uh, for moving out one of those pieces. So I think that's probably as close as we're going to get this time around. Um, but I think we're, I think we're close on the same page or I am. It's what I hear from my commissioners. Yeah, we don't make decisions here, but <laughs> I, I want to make sure you're getting enough direction we, that you need. Yeah. And I think, I think that, I think the design team is comfortable with that in terms of direction to keep moving with schematic design in the existing J JLEC expansion because it's very important. We wanted to to sort of make sure everyone was comfortable with the notion that even if the sheriff, emergency management, emergency communication move out, there is not enough space in that building to do everything we needed to do. We will still need an addition. So, and I'm we're very worried about that piece, and so we want to continue. I, I don't want that team to stop working on that piece and only work on sheriff's operations. We need to continue with with at least that base portion. And then at a certain point, we're gonna decide if we have enough capacity and it makes sense to do an additional sheriff's operations building at this time. Sounds great. Inside the dollars that we have available. Yep. And I, you know, just to put a point on that, Sarah, I think to me, it's why at least right now with as much information as we have, and I agree with fellow commissioners that a little bit more concrete as much more concrete detail as we can get will help us feel more confident in which direction to move forward but that uh logically it just seems that there are efficiencies and economies of scale to be had by doing the two things at once um and simultaneously that there just naturally seems like over time anyway that there's some money savings in that um, but it also just helps for more efficient planning to be able to maximize the space uh, the renovation and the addition um, now rather than sort of a temporary version of that while waiting for a later more radical change to the building so um 
And I'd also just want to reiterate what I heard you say earlier, Jeff, that um, I really like the idea of trying to, you know, make those goals happen within that 70K maximum um, of option four that we were talking about. And the trade off being that it's adding less square footage, um, but maximizing what a, a different space could look like. So, um, and I don't, it doesn't seem to me based on this conversation that there's going to be any massive delays in this. And I know, you know, we've arguably dragged it on a little bit so far this year, but um, it's a huge project or probably the biggest project that the county has ever done in the history of Douglas County. So um, a little bit more detail will be helpful and hopefully make us feel confident with the path forward. I, I recognize that I was the one that needed a little more convincing on the, the need for the square footage um, and the, the, the need for the dollars being spent now. Uh, met with quite a lot of folks and, and dug into this and certainly uh, bugged Jeff quite a bit too to ask questions. And I, I, I do recognize that the, these pieces are needed and that uh, I think we can accomplish um, two of them or most of two of them in this first phase and that that would be a responsible move for us. I appreciate that, and I appreciate, unless Sarah wants me to speak on anything else, I appreciate the time and effort. And to be real frank, you've made some really good points today, which is this is a big project. It means a lot to the county, and we got to do it right. And I'd rather, to your point, take an extra 30 days to get it right and know that we're doing it right than to get down a road and circle back. And so if that's what this project takes to do and get there, we're committed as a team to do that. And don't ever feel like you're bugging me. Commissioner, to your point, the re one of the reasons we wanted to do that model was your comment at the end of the last one, which is how much parking are we, are we, are we gonna uh, reduce here? And I think to do those types of things and come back and be able to have those conversations helps move the project forward in a more positive direction. So don't ever feel like you're you're bugging me or our team. My last comment is just kind of a silly one, which is that I feel like in the future we might need to monetize the swag of little 3D printed courthouses and gazebos and yeah, JLEs. Everyone's going to want yeah. their own little version of We might need some Douglas printed. County merch. And we, merch. We, <laughs> can, we can sell those. I mean, you know, I'm joking. I'm, <laughs> maybe maybe I like think we can do a lot of things. I can see some of our guests here getting really excited about a small version of the JLEC. That's called sarcasm. So, yeah. Okay, before we. I, I do have yeah. just mm -hmm. one kind of question, and that is when is it appropriate to start talking with the neighborhood about potential impacts? I know we're, we don't really have a, a plan or a project or anything like that, but it always seems like sooner is, is better than later. So I actually did have that great question. So I did have that conversation a little bit with uh, Jay and Sarah. Um, I, I would like to circle back a little bit, I think, um, to our, for our next meeting and have that conversation. Uh, I do think there's some appropriate times uh, to do that. I think there's some things that we may want to do as a public component to this project. And I'd like to strategize a little bit more with Jay and Sarah to make sure that we do that right. They can work with you guys as well on that. And then we can come back the next time and have a plan of what that looks like. Does that help? Okay. And I'm not trying to defer that. I just would, I would I'd like to make sure we get, get, get there. Because we have had some conversations with a handful of different folks uh, over the last uh, uh, four to six weeks. So I have some thoughts on, on what would make some sense. I just wanna make sure that everybody's on the same page before we do that. Anything else, commissioners? All right, with that, we will adjourn until our 5.30 business meeting. Thank you all. <laughs>